So we are here, as we've been reminded, because of the Lord Jesus Christ, and uh, we're called to walk in his footsteps in uh, proclaiming the gospel and healing the sick. And our emblem of the cross and labor, it's the cross that Jesus carried, and it's the bowl with which he washed uh, his disciples' feet, that we're similarly called to carry his cross and to wash one another's feet and to be fruitful in uh, ministry with him. So I'm going to look at life before COVID, life during, and then life after in terms of our strategic priorities. And we all know that life before COVID, ICMDA was pretty much about running global and regional conferences and supporting field workers to travel. And of course, both of those things became impossible. In my first year, I made 20 trips abroad to 20 different countries, but for the last 18 months, I've been sitting largely at home, and that's still been the case for most of us. So the last World Congress in India in 2018 in Hyderabad, many of us were there, 900 from almost from, from over 80 countries. And then it was also a year, not 2019, of regional congresses, and you'll recognize some of those that all of you were at, I think probably one of those, regional conferences in Southern Africa, East Africa, Southeast Asia, East Asia, and Western Europe. And then we also had a year for the first time when conferences were held in most of the major, uh, the seven major world languages in the world. Uh, and that was part of the legacy of Vinod's work. But there were world congresses for French, Spanish, Arabic, and Portuguese speakers uh, that year in Guatemala, in, uh, in Egypt, in Mozambique, and in Burkina Faso. And then we also uh, really escalated our training of young leaders and we ran regional young leaders training events in South Africa, Indonesia, Western Europe, Ukraine, Egypt, and in Kenya as well. And we had planned in 2020 to run many more of those, but of course those were not possible. So that was life before, life during COVID. It, uh, as we're reminded, the Chinese character for crisis. The word crisis is made up of two characters, one meaning danger and the other meaning opportunity. And as Einstein says, in the midst of every crisis lays, lies great opportunity. So we need to look for the, the silver lining of opportunity behind the dark clouds of crisis. And so ICMDA adapted in many ways. We set up a senior team. That's been a, a great blessing, which has met every initially every week and then every couple of weeks, we're still meeting every month. And it's uh, really been a great blessing to ICMDA. And of course, then it was uh, Zoom meetings like this European leaders one were happening uh, everywhere with increasing regularity. And ICMDA adapted by going much more IT intensive. So we, we had just actually launched our new website in October 2019 by God's grace. And so we were all up and running, ready to, to go uh, with that when COVID hit, because uh, we didn't know, but God did. And so the first thing we did was to uh, really resource the church and the organizations in terms of information relating to COVID. And then it was very shortly after that, that we held our first uh, global webinar. And we had Santosh actually speaking on issues relating to COVID in April 2020, and we've just held our 77th webinar. So they've become a regular feature of the ICMDA program with um, anything between uh, 50 and 300 people attending from up to 60 countries every week. We launched a YouTube channel uh, shortly after that as well uh, for conference talks and webinars. And in May, so just two months into COVID, we, we launched the Family Medicine Diploma, the two-year blended learning course, which we'll come back to later. Uh, we started, uh, we launched a training track uh, program in July, 2020, and then a training site where a whole series of videos and other training materials were available later that year. And so uh, ICMDA had to, adapt when we were we were all doing that in different ways so now we come to think about what what does life look after 
coronavirus? And where are we now as, a, as an international association? And where we are is that we represent, we think about 60,000 Christian doctors and dentists throughout the world, 84 national movements, 28 other movements we're in contact with. And uh, we have grown to five staff and 59 field workers from three staff and 33 field workers at the beginning of 2019. <coughs> and so um, we now have a, <coughs> a workforce of over 60 with, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, the staff, the regional secretaries, the AOs, regional reps and, and area reps. Uh, ICMDA, of course, is led by a board of 13 people from 12 different countries pictured here, which last met in person in Indonesia in 2019, but meets every six months now online. And there are uh, not all of us field workers because they can't all fit on one page, but uh, incredible growth from 50, uh, 59 now from 44 different countries altogether, extraordinarily international. Those are our 14 world uh, regions, so three in the Americas, We've got uh, five in, in Africa with the formation of the new Francophone African one, the, the French group. Eurasia has been divided into Europe in the, in the West and Eurasia in the East. And then the other regions are pretty much uh, as they were. So 14 main regions. And these are our seven major world language groups. So the orange is English, and then uh, Spanish is yellow, Portuguese and, and red. French in purple, Arabic here, Chinese, and then of course, Russian as well. And increasingly we're, we're seeking to have all our resources in those languages. So in terms of where we go, uh, there are eight strategic priorities that we have going forward. Now, our, our vision is a Christian witness through doctors and dentists in every community and in every nation. And our aim is to start and to strengthen national movements. And out of that, we, we have crystallized these eight strategic priorities for the next five years, which are going to direct uh, everything that we do. And let me just uh, bring you up to date with where we are with those eight things one by one. So first of all, uh, our first strategic priority is to establish new movements. ICMDA started back in 1960 six with just uh, six, soon became 12, it's grown to 84 now. And uh, there are certain regions in the, in the world where there is rapid growth going on at the moment. So that's our growth from 12 to 84 national movements. And you'll all be familiar with this, the, the green countries are those where we have member countries, the orange where we have contact groups, moving towards affiliation, the, the blue ones where there are individual contacts and gray where we're still looking for contacts. And then we have, uh, each country has one of those four statuses. You can see the numbers there, 84 green, 28 amber or orange, 30 blue and 40 gray. And so that each region of the world will be different in this regard if we look at West Africa, and this is Anglophone West Africa, so not the French speaking countries. You can see that we've got um, member countries in Nigeria, Ghana and Gambia. We've got a contact group in Guinea-Bissau. Uh, we've got individual contacts in Liberia and Sao Tomo, And then we're still looking for contacts in some of the other places. So every, every country is different in that regard. Secondly, strengthening existing movements. So helping those to grow from small beginnings up to movements that are strong and have a, a missionary focus. And we had identified 10 uh, main areas of growth uh, using the acronym LAVER CROSS, uh, our two emblems, LAVER and the CROSS. So L-A-V-E-R-C-R-O-S-S, -S, and each of these stands for a different area, leadership, advocacy, volunteers, evangelism, and so on. And we've developed training courses to help with each of those particular areas. And I was sent this the other day. This is, this is uh, from 
the Lancet Medical Journal in 1949, and you can see that this is April the 3rd, 1949, there's a letter here from someone called Neville Bradley, and he's saying that the time is opportune to link medical men and women in some more effective way in order to promote and maintain a distinctive Christian witness. And this was how the Christian Medical Fellowship of the UK began with this, this letter calling people together. And it was actually later that, that year, you, sorry, you can see that's 1948, because it was a year later in 1949 that Christian Medical Fellowship started just with a few individuals. Now that's not that long ago. And now we have a movement of over 4,000 Christian doctors and medical students uh, working together. And, and the same story could be told all over the world. So we're about strengthening them from small beginnings to stronger. A major focus has been growing in servant leaders. And we're going to look much more at this later. So I'll go through it very quickly now, but the, the webinar series, all of which are recorded and available on the website and can be used uh, in your local groups with associated study materials. The uh, Diploma of Family Medicine, uh, which we now have, we're now into second year. We have 28 students who passed the first year from 12 countries, and we've got 42 currently in the second year. So 70 students altogether with plans in the future to run this in French, Spanish, Arabic, Portuguese, and Russian. And the number of training tracks that we've had has also expanded. And in our later session, after the break, we're going to look at that in much more detail. So that's our, our uh, third aim, training uh, young leaders. And then our fourth aim is fostering strong fellowship. And we have uh, glossed already over the, the regional conferences, the uh, world congresses and so on. This is our fifth global summit since COVID started. Four of them have been just for field workers and one for uh, national leaders and board members as well. And these sorts of virtual events, we've now got lots of experience with, like the Pan-African Congress, which uh, over 600 attended at Easter time in this year. And similar regional events have been run uh, all over the world. So what's replaced this has been regional events. But we're, we're hoping now, as begin, things begin to lift, to get back to uh, these, these real events where people are gathering. And we'll be hearing later today about plans for the next World Congress, which is going to be in June 2023. Alex Bolek will be speaking to us about how that's developing in Arusha in Tanzania. So the fifth uh, strategic priority, building strategic partnerships. And uh, these are some of the very close partners that we, we have with whom relationships are, are deepening. Uh, this is the Lausanne Conference in the Philippines, the IFES World Assembly in South Africa, uh, the uh, Saline Leaders Conference. And in fact, just last weekend, there was a gathering of almost 100 leaders involved in Saline training all over the world from the organizations making up the International Saline Partnership, of which uh, ICMBA is, of course, one. Sixth strategic priority, communicating clear messages. So COVID's been a big, uh, big encouragement to us to develop a skill in IT on media, social media, newsletters, the, the monthly uh, newsletter which comes out with news of what's happening around the world and of the, now the COVID bulletin, which is now in its 18th edition, which comes out in the middle of every month. The blog was launched in the middle of COVID very soon on. And we're now uh, over halfway in assembling the Doctor's Life Support version uh, five. So 198 out of 365 entries we've already received. They're being edited. If you haven't written any, we'd love you to do that and contribute to that. And you, will, uh, you can also sign up online to get Life Support four via the website. And if you were following that, you would have seen a couple of days ago that that uh, Santosh's story about Ezekiel 47 was there, just uh, God's coincidence that he'd written some years ago. 
cutting edge technology, some of the technologies that we're, we're using, which we're all familiar with, um, that, that have really helped us with the website and getting the world word out and connecting you. And probably the latest that's become a big part of the training schemes is the Slack platform, which enables people to interact on particular questions over a 10 week uh, online course and really build community and relationship and communication. And then finally, underlining everything is the importance of mobilizing intercessory prayer. And the prayer diary now has really come in, into its own, available not just in hard copy, but also uh, being put into social media every single day and translated into different languages. So we hope you've enjoyed the new prayer diary, which now covers three months from August, September to October, with two pages for every region.